Welcome to the second lesson in our series on motion in one dimension. In this lesson, we will investigate vertical motion in two directions. This means motion up and down. In the last lesson, we learned that acceleration due to gravity has the value of 9,8 meters per second squared. The symbol G is a special symbol for acceleration as it represents the acceleration an object experiences due to the force of gravity on the Earth. We also looked at the graphs of motion that could be drawn for an object moving vertically downwards. We assumed that the downward direction is what we call positive. We saw that the position versus time graph was a curve while the velocity versus time graph was a straight line. And we found that the acceleration versus time graph was a straight line parallel to the time axis. In this lesson, we are going to consider the motion of an object moving both up and down. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe and explain the motion of a vertical projectile and draw the appropriate graphs of motion for the vertical projectile. Watch me as I throw this tennis ball up, then catch it again. This is an example of using the tennis ball as a projectile. A projectile is simply an object that is moving vertically after being dropped down or thrown up. I'm glad to see that Nombulelo is back with us on webcam. Hello, Nombulelo. Good morning, Sibu. Thank you for letting me join you again. I really want to learn more about motion. Good. Feel free to ask any questions. In fact, I have some questions for you right now. How is this up and down motion different to when a ball just falls down? Do you think the ball still experiences acceleration of 9,8 meters per second squared? Um, I'm not sure. And do you think the velocity of the ball changes during this motion? Gosh, I'm not sure if I know that one either. Right, then we'd better investigate this. As we did in the previous lesson, we are going to use the motion detector in the lab to investigate the motion of a ball being thrown up and falling down. There are several readings that we need to take during our investigation. They are initial velocity, final velocity, distance to maximum height, and time taken for motion. For this investigation, we set up the motion detector to measure the velocity of the ball at a specific height above the ground. Here's how we did it. Legend threw the ball up, and when it passed the 50 centimeter mark on the ruler, the motion detector gave us the reading of the velocity. The ball reached its maximum height at the top of the ruler, and the motion detector measured the velocity here. When the ball dropped back down again, the motion sensor gave us a reading of the velocity when it reached the 50 centimeter position. When the ball moved up, the first velocity reading was 3,132 meters per second. When the ball moved down, the motion sensor gave us a reading of 3,133 meters per second at the same position. So at the 50 centimeter position, the ball had a very similar value for velocity going up and coming down. Is a velocity a vector? Yes, velocity is a vector. So we need to take direction into account. This is very important. Throughout this investigation, we will take the upwards direction as positive. This is known as the sign convention. Any upward vector will have a positive value and any downward vector will have a negative value. This diagram represents the motion of the ball. Notice that the initial velocity, vi, is positive 3,13 meters per second when the ball was first thrown up. But the final velocity, vf, is negative 3,13 meters per second because the ball was moving down. If we repeated this experiment over and over again, we would get the same results each time. What I mean is the velocity of the ball moving upwards is equal in value but opposite in direction 
to the velocity of the ball moving downwards at the same height above the ground. Now let's think about the acceleration of the ball. The velocity of the ball changed, therefore the ball must have experienced acceleration. How do we measure that? The motion detector does that for us too. It measures the time it takes for the ball to move up from the 50 centimeter position and back down to this position again. The time taken is 0.64 seconds. Can you see how to work out the acceleration that the ball experienced from these readings? I still don't understand how to work out the acceleration. Here's a hint. Use one of the equations of motion that are on the data sheet to help you calculate the acceleration experienced by the ball. How did you do, Nambulelo? Were you able to calculate the ball's acceleration? Yes, but I'm not sure if it's correct. We'll check, shall we? It's sometimes easier to write a list of the given information before choosing which equation to use. We know that the initial velocity is 3,13 meters per second up, and so the value is positive. The final velocity is 3,13 meters per second downwards, and so the value is negative. The time taken is 0,64 seconds. And what are we looking for? The acceleration. Correct. And so we use the equation Vf is equal to Vi plus A times delta T. Substitute in what we know, and don't forget the negative for the final velocity. To solve for acceleration, we need to get A on its own. So now 0,64 A is equal to negative 3,13 minus 3,13. 0,64 times A is equal to negative 6,26. Therefore, A is equal to negative 6,26 divided by 0, 0,64, which is equal to negative 9,78 meters per second squared. If the acceleration has a negative value, what does this say about the direction of the acceleration of the ball? Any ideas, Nambulelo? Um, I think it means that the acceleration is acting downwards. Of course. This should make sense to you as we know that all objects are attracted to the Earth because of gravity. What do you notice about the value we calculated? You would have seen that it is 9,78, which is approximately 9,8 meters per second squared. This is the value for acceleration due to gravity that we calculated in the previous lesson. Now we have seen that when a ball is thrown up, it will experience an acceleration of 9,8 meters per second squared, acting downwards. It will return to its original position at the same velocity that it was thrown, but in the opposite direction. What do you think is happening when the ball reaches the top of its motion? I did some experiments. It seems the ball stops before it goes down again. Watch. True, as the ball travels upwards, it slows down because it is experiencing a negative acceleration due to gravity. Eventually, the ball stops. Once it reaches the top of its motion and stops, it changes direction and begins falling down again. It gets faster and faster because it is moving in the same direction as the acceleration it is experiencing. The motion sensor gave us a reading of zero velocity when the ball was at its highest point. We can confirm this by doing a calculation using the data we got from the lab. Remember the ball moved up from the 50 centimeter position before it changed direction at the top of the ruler? We call this our final velocity for this calculation and that's what we need to find. The acceleration of the ball is negative 9,8 meters per second squared. And the change in position between the point we measured the initial velocity and top of the ruler 50 centimeters, which is 0,5 meters up. 
Now let's calculate the final velocity of the ball at the top of its motion. We use the equation final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement because we have vi acceleration and distance traveled delta y. So vf squared is equal to 3,132 squared plus 2 times negative 9,8 times by 0, 0,5. Then vf squared is equal to 9,809 minus 9,8, which is equal to 0, 0,009. Next, we must take the square root of both sides to find the velocity of the ball at its maximum height. This value for velocity is very close to 0 meters per second and is probably due to the fact that it is difficult to measure the distance from the starting position to the maximum height accurately. So we concluded from our experiment and calculation that the velocity of the ball at its highest point is 0 meters per second. So the ball actually stops. Sure. Yes. But please take careful note here. Even though the velocity of the ball at the top of its motion is zero, the acceleration it experiences is still 9,8 meters per second squared. The ball is still attracted to the Earth, and thus the acceleration due to the gravity doesn't simply disappear during the motion of an object moving through the air. With all that we know now, we can work out how long it takes for the ball to reach the top of its motion. This time, we'll use the equation. Final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times change in time. You see, in this upward throw, the final velocity is at the top of the throw. Substituting in the values we know, zero is equal to 3,132 plus negative 9,8 times delta t. Therefore, 9,8 delta t is equal to 3,132. Dividing by 9,8 on both sides leaves us with a value for time of 0, 0,3196, which we can round off to 0, 0,32 seconds, correct to two decimal places. Do you see how long it took for the ball to reach the top of its motion? I'm sure that's half the time the ball took to move up and down. Yes, we've calculated that it took 0, 0,32 seconds for the ball to reach the top of its motion. And earlier we saw that it took 0, 0,64 seconds for the ball to return to its original position from here to here. If the time to reach the top of the motion is 0, 0,32 and the total time is 0, 0,64, the time taken for the ball to move from its highest position back to its original position must then be 0, 0,32 seconds as well. Now, there's something very interesting that happened during our experiments in the lab. Legend threw the ball up and then let it fall past its original position. The motion detector continued to measure the velocity of the ball. When the ball was a meter below the starting position, it found that the ball had a velocity of 5,418 meters per second downwards. Let's see if we can confirm that the motion detector is correct. Calculate using our equations of motion. This diagram shows all the information we know. Do you see that delta y is negative 1 meter? This is because the ball is 1 meter below its starting position. So the displacement is down, which makes it a negative value. We'll use the equation final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. Vf squared is equal to 3,132 squared plus 2 times negative 9,8 times minus 1, which is equal to 9,8 plus 19,6. This is equal to 29,4. We must take the square root of both sides. 
and the final velocity is equal to positive or negative 5,423 meters per second. However, since we know that the ball is moving downwards, the velocity should be a negative. You should also round off two decimal places. So our answer is negative 5,42 meters per second. Graphs of motion can be drawn for the motion of the ball that went below its starting position. First, let's look at the position versus time graph. First, the ball moves up till it reaches the top of its motion and then it moves down. When it reaches its starting position at 0,64 seconds, it continues beyond that point. From here, the displacement is negative. This position versus time graph is always a curve. Let's consider the velocity versus time graph. What shape do you think it will be? I'm sure you got it. It will be a straight line because going down, the ball experiences a constant acceleration of 9,8 meters per second squared. The ball started with a velocity of 3,13 meters per second. It then slowed down to zero, which is the top of its motion. When it reached its starting position, its velocity was negative 3,13 meters per second. And then it went beyond that point to reach a velocity of negative 5,42 meters per second. Finally, we need to consider the acceleration versus time graph. What shape will this graph have? A horizontal line. That's right. It will be a straight line horizontal to the time axis. But is it above or below the time axis? I think it's below the time axis. You're correct, Nombulelo. It's going to be below the time axis. Acceleration always acts in a downward direction. We chose upward movement as the positive direction, so acceleration has a negative value. Your task for this lesson is to redraw the three graphs of motion that we have just looked at, but choose the downward direction as the positive direction.